there everyone. Welcome to my third video blog. For those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning viewers, welcome back. I'm very excited today to show you all that I've been up to in October and what a busy month it's been. So um, I've actually had limited craft time the last two weeks because there was a COVID scare at um, my kids' daycare. So that means that they've been at home for the last two weeks and it's been hectic. Anyway, um, so I guess we'll just get started straight away. And the first finished object, I'm actually wearing it. It's my um, Stir It Up top by Wool and the Gang. So I've finished it. I'll just try to stand so you can see it a bit better. Um, it's really see-through, so I'm wearing, obviously, um, something underneath. I'm wearing a temp top tank top underneath but um yeah it's finished and I love it so this was knitted so not crochet this time it was knitted it's a free pattern on the wool and the gang website and I'll be putting um the link to the pattern and the link to all I'm talking about um into the show notes that you can find underneath the video in the description so I'll just put that um I normally just write a blog post um, with all the show notes and you can find them there. So I've knitted this. Um, normally it calls for um, the um, Happy Shiny Cotton from Wool and the Gang, um, but it's really hard to find in Australia. So instead I used um, the Eco Cotton um, XL by Annette Erickson. Um, and I just found this at my local spotlight um, I'm in Australia. And um, yeah, I've just used three strands. I don't know if you can see, but I've used three strands of the cotton held together to give it the right thickness. Um, and that's um, yeah, what I needed to do to obtain gauge on my top. So um, yeah, I'm, um, it's really see-through. They're probably a lot more see-through than what I thought it was going to be. And also this opening at the front, <laughs> you can probably tell, it goes almost to my belly button. So it's really a big opening, which is why I really have to wear something underneath. But I think it looks quite good as an overlay on top of a tank top. And it'll definitely be really nice for summer here. So it's starting to get into summer here. Um, so yeah, it's like a good make for that. And I've already worn it a couple of times and I think it worked really well. So really happy about this. Now, what else um, can I show you in finished project? I've got a few, so bear with me. Um, I've participated in a few tests this month. So those next two projects were tests for one of my friends, Lindsay. Um, she's Lazy Pen Creations on Instagram. And she decided to um, make this pattern. This is the Mini Hero Link. So she designed him for the Amigurumi Showcase contest that was held over um, July and August. Um, and yeah, so I really love Link. I'm a huge Lord of Rings, oh, not Lord of Rings. I'm a huge Legends of Zelda fan. Also a huge Lord of Rings, but this is Legend of Zelda. So I really like this little Link. I love the Zora suit, which is why I've made my Link in blue um, with a blue little suit. And yeah, I just find him so cute. This is a free pattern as well that you can find on Instagram. So if you're also a big Legend of Zelda fan, you can go and make your own. Um, it's very cute. And because I couldn't just leave him by himself, you know that Link often has a sidekick in the games. I also made him a little tiny Navi. You know, you know the one. Hey! The one that always tells you um, about what to do in the game. So I think this one was from Madra Mask. Anyway, I loved making the little Navi. Um, it's, I just freehanded it. I don't have a pattern. It was just for, for fun, just to go with Link. Um, so yeah, you can put his little Navi onto his hat. Got it overexposed. Can you hear better? Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Had lots of fun making him and Navi. And um, Lindsay also really likes Halloween like me and so she's also released another pattern which is a pumpkin so um, this is her retro pumpkin um, pattern it's also a free pattern on Instagram and it's made by holding three strands of yarn together 
So I have used DK acrylic for it just because I had um, some spare one in my stash and I just wanted to give it a bit more of a cozy feel um, that cotton doesn't really get. So it's like nice, it's a bit fuzzy and um, looks a bit more cozy and retro. So yeah, I just really liked making it. It was a bit hard on my fingers just because um, it's crocheted with a bigger hook and I generally find that hurts my wrists a little bit if I do too much of it. Um, but I had so much fun making it like this that I decided to make a tiny version. <laughs> so I used some um, spare crochet, um, no it's not crochet, embroidery thread that I had. And I used a 1.25 crochet hook which is really tiny. And this is my little baby pumpkin. I really love making it. Uh, Lindsay said that it would look perfect as earrings. So maybe I should just make another one and make it as an earring pair. Um, that would be really fun. I have quite a few pairs of earrings that I do um, use. I have strawberry ones and I have some cacti. And I have um, a pair of jellyfish one as well. So maybe I'll make pumpkin earrings to go with my autumnal um, wardrobe. Maybe. That might be a good idea to do this. So yeah, this was the retro pumpkin pattern by Lazipin Creations on Instagram. Um, what else? Oh yes, I also have uh, another test to show you. So you might remember I've talked to you about it last time um, and said I couldn't show it to you, but now I can. I'm very excited to introduce you to Jennifer the Ballerina. So this is a pattern by Ohana Hook, and um, oh my gosh, let's just excuse me with my light. Here we go. Right. So this is a pattern by Ohana Hook. Um, it's an elf ballerina. She is absolutely like she's just so cute. I've put a wireframe through her whole body, so I can pose her arms. You can pose them as you want, if you want to do like a ballerina pose. And I've also put wire through the legs and that's all explained in the pattern, which was really good. So you can make her pose, take different ballerina poses. It's very cool. Um, and I made her in yellow because I wanted to make um, Emma Watkins from The Wiggles. So for those of you who aren't um, familiar with them, the Wiggles are an Australian um, child um, pop group, I guess. So they sing a lot of nursery rhymes and um, children's songs and they have awesome shows, um, like live shows that they do and they tour Australia. I think they tour the US as well every year. And Emma is the very first female Wiggle and she was the yellow wiggle, so that's why um, she's wearing a yellow dress. And she's also a ballerina, so I thought that was very fitting. Um, we also really like Emma in our family because her birthday is the same day as Clark and I, so we all share the same birthday, which is pretty awesome. Um, sadly, Emma is actually retiring from the wiggles, so um, she's been um, working a lot with the deaf community and trying to advocate for the deaf community. And so I think um, she said that she was going to um, pursue that a bit more. So she's left the Wiggles now, but she'll still stay an iconic um, Wiggle in our house anyway. And so, yeah, Emma always wears a bow in her hair. So I've also made a little yellow bow. Um, that doesn't come with the pattern. The pattern comes with very beautiful little flowers that you can put all around um, the bun here. But I've decided to make a bow because this was my Emma Ballerina elf um, here. So yeah, very cool. And the dress can actually also be removed completely. So you don't have to leave it on. If you want to make another dress in another color, you could totally do that. And then um, you just have to remove the dress. I haven't sewn mine on at all, so you, I can actually remove it um, if I wanted to. Um, yeah, I really like it. And very excitingly, so Ohana Hook is one of my French friends. Um, her name is Claudie. I've talked to her about it before. Um, talked about her before here, but she is for the first time going to release her patterns in English, which is very exciting. So 
Jennifer, the ballerina, the elf ballerina, is going to be the first of her patterns to be written in English as well. So it's very exciting. And then if you want to make any of her other patterns, you can always find my guides for translating um, French patterns into English. I've actually done that on my blog and you can just have a look if you fancy um, trying to make a few French patterns in English too. I've just can, like done a little table where you can see the um, crochet terms in French and in English. And if you need any help, you can always ask me because, you know, I speak French. So if, um, yeah, if ever you want to make a pattern that's in French, feel free to just ask and I'm always happy to help. So that was Jennifer, the ballerina. So that's all the tests that I've been doing. Um, the next project that I finished is, so I'm just going to show you some of my projects now, some of my patterns that I've um, just made. Um, it's Benedict the Bear. So Benedict the Bear was sitting in pieces in my drawers and um, I actually had only made the head for the longest time, the head and the ears, and it was waiting to get finished in my drawers since February or March. So it's been a while. Poor Benedict was just sitting there. Um, I have now finished him. Um, Dylan, my husband, helped me choose the colors. So I've made him in um, those um, orange and yellows. And I think he looks so happy. I just I just love those colors. Those really make me happy. Um, so yeah, he's finished and he can join his pal. Um, Benjo the bunny. So Benedict and Benjo are um, both in the same pattern and you can find them on web my website. So yeah, they're just both in the same patterns because they actually have the same body. Um, it's just the head, the shape of the head and the ears that are different. So I've put both of them into the same pattern so that you can make both if you want. Um, but yeah, I really... I really enjoyed making them again and it was really nice um, and now I think Clark can have those ones so I normally try to keep on my shelf at home um, just one of each of my designs but sometimes when I remake them I just give them to Clark to play with or um, some I've also had people ask me if I was selling some of them so some of them have gone to new homes as well just because I can't keep all the crochet projects that I make so yeah so that was Benedict the bear and Benjo the bunny. The next um, project I want to show you is also another one of my patterns that I've remade. So in this case, I've remade it. I've all, I think I've already talked to you about it last time. But I wanted to remake it because I was updating the patterns. So I was taking new pictures, um, a lot of... Um, a lot more pictures of the process as well and like the assembly and stuff like that and um, so I need to remake it so this is Willy the Wisp the reason why I really wanted to remake it because was because I wanted to have it ready for Halloween obviously because um, he's a little wisp and wisps come out for Halloween um, so yeah it's a very simple pattern. It's a free pattern on my website. I actually also um, give you the free PDF if you just want to um, go onto my website and download it. Um, yeah, what else to say about Willy? That was actually one of my first designs for um, a design contest um, that was hosted, I think it was 2018? No, 2017. 2017, that's when we first moved down to Victoria. So yeah, that was one of my first designs um, for a contest. I really enjoyed making it again. It was quite fun. It's super simple. It's literally just like two, you know, those two pieces and then you just saw the arms on. Um, and I also have translated this pattern in French, finally. So after four years, it's finally done. <laughs> Um, I have lots of my patterns that I really need to update and translate into French and it's just been taking me so long. So yeah, I thought that was going to be really fast, but it's been the ordeal. So I'm really happy when I can just stick things off my list and Willy has been done, which is great. So he's now available. The new um, updated pattern and both in English and French is now on my website. Um, and it's a free pattern, which is really fun. Um, and the next thing I wanted to show you, it's actually quite funny, 
Um, this was not planned at all. It's just kind of like happen um, as projects often do. Um, I wanted to make a Christmas bubble for Clark and Eric. Um, these are my sons. And um, so I just made one. So I haven't made Eric's one yet, but I've made Clark's. Um, and this his is Christmas bubble. So I've made it with his favorite color, which is purple. And I wrote his name on one side. I also used some gold thread. So this is the Rikurumi um, Lame thread in gold. And I've just doubled it with um, some Katona thread. Um, and then I crocheted using a four millimeter hook. And the main body, that's cotton from Hobie Yarn. And that's the 8-8 rainbow cotton. Um, so same thing, I crocheted that in four in four millimeter hook. And um, yeah, so I made it like that. I made little knobs on either side in gold. Um, and then on the other side, Clark is obsessed with dinosaurs. So I have cut a felt dinosaur head, a T-Rex head. And I've just sewn it on the other side. So now I just need to figure out what I'm going to make for Eric. So I think I want to have the same thing, have his name on the one side. And then um, have some kind of felt cut um, shape on the other side. But I'm not quite sure. And it's hard to ask him what he likes because he's only 11 months. So I don't really know what he likes. Um, so yeah, we might, I might have a think about it. Um, Maybe a Lego piece, he really likes Lego. I don't know. I'll just try to think about it and put something on the other side. And then the boys, the boys can both hang their Christmas um, bubble onto the Christmas tree when we do it in December. So that was pretty fun. Um, another finished, <laughs> finished project. Um, that's actually not, it's not knitting or crochet. Um, I just wanted to do a bit more cross stitch. So um, it's a cross stitch project that I've finished. It's, um, I finished to stitch it, but I haven't quite decided how I'm going to finish the whole thing. Um, I have made a little sea butterfly. So I use, oops, I use um, plastic canva and I've, cro I've cross stitched um, the design onto the plastic so it's quite it's nice and thick and it's very rigid and I was thinking of maybe putting um, some felt at the back you can see my back it's not too bad it's a bit a bit messy but not too bad um, yeah so I'm probably gonna put a felt at the back so that you can't really see the you know the what the what am I looking for the threads so you can't really see all the threads hanging um, and I don't know, I was thinking maybe a bookmark that I could use into, um, yeah, maybe I could just use it as a bookmark, like kind of put a string on one hand on one side there and then, um, use it to maybe keep the pages on my crochet books or my knitting books to remember where I want to, like which projects I want to make first. I don't know. Or maybe I could just hang it in Christmas tree. Not sure. But yes, I just had fun making it though. Um, this is based on one of my drawings. Um, so yeah, it's cute. I like it. Let me know if you would like to see more of my cross stitch um, projects as well. I don't do it very often, but I like to do it from time to time. And I have made quite a few big cross stitch projects in the past, but not in a while. So yeah, just let me know if you'd like to see more of that as well. Okay, so I think we should now move on to the works in progress. Um, and there are some other finished projects, but I'll talk to um, you about them just in a bit. So my works in progress, the first one I want to show you is um, this one. So I am knitting socks again. Yay, I haven't knitted socks in so long. But um, Clark is having a problem with his socks at the moment. He... Um, I don't really know what is happening, but I think a lot of his socks were too small and so he's been refusing to wear socks and he doesn't like them. And so it's been really hard because if we go to a play center, he has to wear socks. Anyway, so I've decided to make him some of those socks. 
um, because kids feet grow really fast and I didn't want them to only last you know a month um, I've decided to um, get like I've got inspired to make doughs based on a pattern um, called so it's a free pattern and it's called the tube kids socks and that's by Jane Richmond so I'll just put all the info um, into the blog post but the way she does the socks is she actually, it's a toe-up sock, the way she does it. But I don't like knitting toe-up socks. I've tried it before and I just, I don't know, I just don't like the start. I find it so fiddly and I really don't enjoy it. So I have decided to instead um, do this um, from the top down. So I've started here like, uh, this one is finished. So you see there's actually no heel, it's just a tube and that's just because when you put your foot in it will naturally give it a heel because of the knitting and so yeah you don't need to do like um, you know a heel flap or anything for kids because their feet are just growing up so fast. So hopefully it gets um, you know at least six months to a year use out of those and um, the second one, I'm almost um, at the toe decreases. So the way I've done it is I've knitted, um, I've started by the top here, I did a um, oh, very stretchy cast on, I think that's what it's called, um, super stretchy cast on, and I'm just um, ribbed, so I've done a two, two by two ribbing for 15 rounds, so I'm just knitting in rounds. And then I just, it's just single, like just normal knitting, um, just all the way down. You can see I'm using my super short um, circular needles from Knit Pro. I love those. They're like, for me, like they're the best to knit socks. And those ones are my 2.25 um, size. And I've started with 48 stitches. So... And they fit nicely on his legs, so that's good. So yeah, 48 stitches, 2x2 two two ribbing for like 15 rounds. And then just knit all the way down until I was kind of bored of that first one. So I decided to decrease. And this one, I'm just making it as big as this one, the first one. And then I just do um, a decrease that's um, four stitch decrease every second row. So yeah, that's what I've done for the first one and what I'm gonna do for the second one and that's almost done as well I really like the um, pattern on that yarn I will need like a bit annoying you can probably tell um, here there was actually a knot on the yarn which I have put on the outside because I didn't want it to bother um, Clark inside the sock but the problem is that with that I didn't realize but um, it's starting back the pattern so you can see there was like that like dark blue and then this like light blue white dotted pattern and then it just kind of repeats that so now they're not matching which really is, it's really sad because i had made them match so well from the top like look at that they were matching perfectly until here and then um obviously they won't be matching for the bottom so yeah a bit sad about that but hopefully this is the bit that'll be in the shoe so no one will see no one will know um and i'm definitely not restarting it so yeah bit sad about this but it's okay so yeah very enjoying to be knitting socks again um let me know if you've tried knitting socks or if you prefer to crochet them i have to say i've never crocheted socks just because i know how to knit and i fit i think the fabric when you do um knitting is a little bit less thick and so it fits better in shoes. But that's just my opinion. I don't know if you've had a different experience. Um, yeah, let me know if you've knitted socks and if, you, uh, if you've knitted all crocheted socks and if you wear your crochet socks in shoes, I'd be really interested to know because I just haven't tried, but maybe it would work. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Um, and my other, um, my other work in progress. So this is a really fun project. Um, I've told you before that I'm part of that crochet um, discord. It's a French crochet discord and um, it's called La Ganguette Crochet. Anyway, we have set ourselves a challenge of crocheting 
with colors that have been chosen by the bot of the Discord server. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with Discord, a lot of them have, you can have a bot to help you um, to manage people and um, post things and stuff like that. So the, our bot has a cool function called color and it just chooses colors. So we had to draw six different colors with the bot and then from the six colors choose five to make a pattern. So the colors that I got are th this blue. I had another blue as well, but it was really similar, so I decided to not choose it. So this blue, this kind of green, this yellow, this other like yellow, and this orange. So those are the colors that I've got from the bot. And what are we making? We're making a unicorn. So we're making Harry the Unicorn by Brun de Coton. Um, and this is the start of my unicorn. Um, I've actually also added this little number. So this is some sparkly thread and I've just added it with the blue, you can probably tell. So my unicorn will be shiny. Um, so I've made the head, I've made the horn. And this is really cool. Um, I've actually added both like the blue, the green, and some pink sparkle to the horn. So it's very sparkly. And there's another step of the horn when you need to actually do a spiral around. So I haven't done that yet. But I was thinking of doing that in um, gold. Probably. I'll probably do that in gold. And so I've got the horn, the head, I've got some ears. It's all in pieces still. I'm pretty much just missing the tail. Yeah, I'm missing the tail, the body, and the um, mane. So the mane is actually going to be the um, part that has all the colors. So most of my unicorn is going to be blue. And then in the mane, it's going to have all of the other colors. So in the mane, it's going to have um, these Four colors and I was thinking of actually using them this way to make kind of a gradient so yeah can't wait to show it to you when it's finished I think it's gonna be really fun there's been some really um, nice actually color combos that have been thrown by the bots um, so yeah no I think it's it's pretty it's pretty fun to just do a project where you don't get to choose your colors um, although I have to say, most of the times I don't personally choose my colors. I ask my husband because he's a lot better at color matching than me. So, yeah, but that was really fun. Um, I'm really happy with how it's looking already so far. So, um, yeah, that should be that should be pretty fun. Um, so that's about it for the works in progress, um, the main works in progress. The main thing that I've been working on this month wasn't all the things that I've just shown you already. I think this vlog is going to be quite long. The main thing I worked on this month was the Amigurumi School of Magic by Irene Strange and Ilaria Kelleri. So I have finished weeks one, two and three and I'll show them to you now. So I'll, what I'll do is I probably won't show them to you again because I've already started showing you a couple of elements from those weeks before but now I've actually finished them. So I will show you week one so week one was a cheeky troll is now finished a love me not plant and a little mortal and pestle so my little cheeky troll loves to use his mortal and pestle you can actually make it either standing or sitting, but um, I thought it was better to make it sitting because it can sit by itself. So that was really fun to make. So that was week one, which was Earth. And to complete week one, you had the Earth patch as well to go with it. So week one. Then week two was Air, and it comes with a Pegasus. Again, I've used that gold thread for the wings. So the Pegasus. 
a hippogriff feather. I used a rainbow yarn to make um, both the mane and the tail on my little um, pegasus and to make the feather and a cloud. So those were the air wick, um, the wick of air, wick number two, and you also have the patch. And then the third wick was fire. So the main little element of fire was the phoenix. I just, I just love it. And it actually stands by itself, believe it or not. So the phoenix, which I loved making, a little candle with a candle holder and the smart thing is that it's not actually sewn in you have the candle holder and the candle and you can just put the candle in which are cool because now I can just make more candles and just change the candles in my candle holder and then some chilies because you know fire <laughs> so yeah some um, chilies or peppers however you call them spicy so yeah, that was week number three. And now the week number four is water. So I'll just show you what I have for week number four so far. So week number four, oh, and I forgot to show you the patch for fire, sorry. The patch for, fire, for week three. There it is. And then so week four is water. So this is a little uh, merman, so a little triton. That's his beard. <laughs> so he's got his little haircut, his beard. Um, he's got some eyebrows in there as well. So yeah, that's just a bit that I haven't sewn in yet. Um, and there's also a seashell and um, diving helmet for week four. So that's water. So I'll show you week four and week five probably next month when I finish them. And then week five is spirits. So there's a jackalope, that's the main creature. And then there are some spirits, I think, some turnips. I think they're turnip spirits or radishes. And um, I can't remember, I think there's a third thing as well. And obviously there's the patches that go with both um, the water and the spirit week. And of course, the main big project for this Amigurumi School of Magic is the satchel. So it's taken me ages. I just, I have to say, I'm, I kind of lose interest when you have to repeat something too many times. And the problem is that that first bit of the satchel that you have to make is three panels, exactly the same, to make both sides and the flap of the bag. And yeah, I just lost interest. That just took me ages and I just wasn't really into it. And then you actually have to go again and do a smaller bit again for the pocket on top. So yes, I've struggled to get through this to make, but it's now done. So I'm now doing the base of the bag. And I hope that I can get that done Um yeah, soon, because I, I would really like to use this bag. Um, it's a really cool bag. But yeah, this is the bottom, so that's going to be um, the part that goes under here. So yes, and I it's, it's a work in progress, but hopefully we'll get done soon, because I really would like to finish it. So yes, that's my main project for this month was the School of Magic, and I think it might also take quite a bit of my time in November. Okay, so that's all the things I've actually worked on. Now, um, I actually also wanted to talk to you about a few more things this month. So the first thing is I actually forgot to talk to you about it last time, but it was my birthday in September and so I got some awesome books. So I wanted to show them to you. Um, and then I also want to show you some yarn that I've received, that I've ordered um, and received last month and what I'm thinking of making with it. So my birthday presents. This was what I was the most excited about. Um, crochet Wizardry. So this is the official Harry Potter crochet book. 
Um, there's so many awesome things in it that I want to make. Um, I especially love all the amigurumi that, um, like, that are in there. Like, I just love them all. Um, they're just so cool. Um, especially, there's a really awesome phoenix. Um, where did it go? So, I, I love the Petronas. I mean, this is just so cute. Um, I'm pretty sure this is from Spinner Yarn Crochet. Yeah, Jill and Hewitt. Um, so it is, it's, it's so cool. And she's also made a mandrake. And then, I mean, seriously, this is so impressive. Look at that. And it's huge. I mean, Dobie, awesome. Um, and the Phoenix, if I can find it, I just really want to make it. Oh, Edwig is cute too. Here it is, folks. I mean, look at that. Yeah, so excited. And that's by Ennis Kanga. Um, so yeah, I just, and, um, I think Emmy is, um, Amber's mischief on Instagram, but yeah, it's, it's awesome. Forks is awesome. I really want to make it. I don't know when I'll find time to make it. And there's also quite a few garments that are really cool that I want to make. So yes, this will be made. Um, I think I might just start it in the new year just because I want to finish all my Christmas stuff first, but yeah. And then the other thing that I've got is this one, Pokemon Crochet by um, Sabrina Summers. I'm very excited about this one. Um, my brother got this for me, which is really nice considering he's all the way back in France and I'm all the way here in Australia. So um, yeah, thanks little brother. That was such a cool like surprise to receive. And he's already asked me to make him Gengar. So yeah, that's what's um, gonna happen. I'm going to make him Gengar. And if I can get a move on and make it before Christmas, you might receive it for Christmas, otherwise in the new year. But yeah, very excited about those books and I can't wait to get started on them. Um, the other thing, so I told you I've ordered some, some yarn um, with some birthday money. So I've ordered some yarn from Hobie um, and I completely like, I just love this one. Um, I, yeah, I bought stuff. I, so I bought some cotton, which is fine. I'm just going to use that to do amigurumi. That's okay. But just because it's, I love the colors and, um, I have no idea what to make with it. So if you have any idea of what I can make with a yarn cake, um, this is 800 meters. So it's quite a lot of yardage. Um, yeah, if you have any ideas of what I can do with this please let me know because I'm looking for ideas of things that would look good with that yarn I was thinking maybe another virus shawl because I haven't made one in a while or maybe um a skull shawl I don't know but I do have lots of shawls already so maybe something else I don't know. just let me know if you have any ideas of what I can make then I also completely like loved um this yarn so this is some sock yarn um it looks so cool i can't wait to see what it looks like when it's knitted i'm probably gonna knit myself a pair of socks um or two maybe i'll do shorties and so i can have two out of it i think this is 100 grams yeah that's 100 grams so i can probably get two pairs of socks out of it um and yeah same thing i just love the color i'm into a yellow phase at the moment i think or like orange yellow i don't know um, and then the other thing I got was, um, it's actually a yarn that I've already got a pattern that I'm going to make with. So that's the, um, let me just check the label. I think it's a unicorn. What's it called? Yeah, unicorn um, yarn from Hobie as well. And so um, it's 100 grams. So it's just sock. I'm going to make socks with it because it's got polymid in it. Um, yeah, I can't wait to start on those socks because I think they look really flashy and I really like having nice and flashy socks, but, um, the socks that I'm going to make, um, it's from this book called Sock Innovation. Um, and I've had that book for a while now, but I've only made one pattern from it. So I've decided it was time to do some more and I'm going to do this, these socks. 
I think they'll look really great with that color. It's quite similar actually. But yeah, I really like the fact that it's just like interweaving. It looks like there's like bits that are interweaving. Um, and I've had a quick look at the pattern. I think it's just really with like increases and decreases. It's not real cables, but it looks kind of like cables. So I think it looked really good. Um, yeah, can't wait to get started. I'll probably get started as soon as I finish um, Clark's socks. I'll just cast mine on. And I think those, yeah, those are my preferred, like, starting from the top. Um, starting with the cuff, going down, doing a heel flap. I really like heel flaps um, over all other kinds of heels. Um, and then finishing with a, um, like, toe decrease. So, yeah, can't wait to get started. I'll show them to you next time. Don't know if I'll have time to knit the whole socks in the month, but maybe. It depends. If, in, if I'm in a sock knitting mood, generally, I can just knit them pretty fast, but we'll see what happens with that. So that's kind of it for um, my new acquisitions, I guess. Um, the, I also wanted, sorry, it's really long this month, so I got a lot of things to talk to you about. And the next thing I wanted to show you are um, two designs in progress that I would like to get finished. And the reason why I'm talking to you guys about it is because I'm hoping this keeps me accountable and that I will actually get them done. This guy has been literally made since 2018 and I still haven't written the pattern. <laughs> this is Archie the Archaeopteryx. Um, and I just really, I really like him. I don't know why I haven't written the pattern for it. I think it's probably because it is a little bit hard or like, yeah, a bit hard to explain because there's a lot of sewing and there's a lot of like positioning of the parts really well. And so I think I was just kind of afraid that my explanations wouldn't be good enough. So I have, I've just been putting it back and then other things have come up, but I am determined to get that pattern out. So um, yeah, this is Archie Diacurpturix. I love his tail. I think it's so cool. Um, I love... The little feathers as well on its arms. Um, I love the little eyebrows that you put on there. I think it's just so cool. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to like just release it. I need to make a new one. I think maybe that's also why. I need to make a new one to take pictures of all the all the parts and um, take some more explanatory pictures on how to make the toes and all that kind of stuff. So and like this part as well. So this is all done in one go, that, that arm. But you have to make sure you position the increases correctly so that when you, um, when you fold it, it actually sits properly. Anyway, I want to release this soon. And then the other one I would like to release, I'm really fond of. Um, this is Greg the Care Bear. This was actually inspired by Carla. Um, so Carla is one, um, she used to own Yarn Artistry, which was an online yarn shop uh, in Australia. And she's sadly had to close earlier this year. But her um, her husband passed away due to cancer. And so she actually started crocheting while she was um, at the hospital um, caring for him. And so we actually had a chat and we decided to create a pattern that could be um, used, that could be made um, by people that are caring for patients with cancer or that have cancer themselves and are um, just getting bored in the just, you know, wait rooms um, of hospitals and they can't do much, but crochet is probably something they can do. So that's how the idea came about. And so we'll, um, I named... Um, Greg after her late husband and so you can just make this design with um, any color you would like on those colored bits and those are made to reflect you know which type of cancer um, so, and I, I just hope that this can just bring a bit of comfort and happiness to people who might be going through really tough times and I was also thinking of donating um, you know most of the sales from this pattern to um, different cancer foundations and um yeah just trying to kind of give back a little bit as well so yes greg the care bear 
um, I'm really hoping that this can be done as well before February. So yeah, I hope you like him. He's very, he's very good and cuddly. Um, it's a good size for cuddles. So that's also what um, I had in mind when I designed him. All right. Uh, and I think that um, this is pretty much it for today. I realize this is actually really long compared to all my other vlogs. I mean, there's only two others, but still. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That really helps me reach more people. And um, you can also subscribe. That makes me really happy. I do a little happy dance every time someone subscribes. And um, yeah, come say hi if you want to just leave a comment as well. That'd be lovely. And yeah, I hope you had a good time. I always have a good time talking to you guys and showing you my projects. And I will see you next month. Okay, bye.